Good morning, this is Nicholas from Gandora Gaming, and today I bring you guys a controversial leader in the form of Hody Jones. This is a character from OPO6 that has not seen any play competitive-wise because his leader effect is very, very polarizing. Uh, if you don't know, Hody Jones is the leader of the new Fishman Pirates. He is a bigot, he is a racist, and he's a piece of shit. But... I do think the leader in the One Piece card game has potential, and I think just discounting him because of that and discounting his effects is a little unfortunate. I think that in OPO7, he got a really, really fantastic card in the form of Fisher Tiger, and I think that this deck actually has huge potential in the metagame, but there's one deck that's completely gatekeeping him out of the meta, that being Red Purple Law. And until that deck has its problems fixed, I think that this leader will always be a sleeper choice in the upcoming meta. So that's kind of what this video is about. I'm going to talk about the cards that we got, uh, some tech cards you could be playing that I chose not to put in this list, and basically my updated Hody Jones deck profile. Now you're probably wondering, out of all the decks that could have made it updated for OPO7, why the hell did I choose uh, Hody Jones? Well, the simple fact is that I think he's a forgotten leader, which is kind of crazy because he came out literally last set. Uh, he's a mono green five life leader that has the effect that on one's return, you may rest him to rest one of your opponent's characters through your less, and then basically you can't add cards from your life to your own effects this turn, which is actually a really, really solid effect. Uh, he also has the effect that if you don't want to rest a 3 cost or less character, you can also rest your opponent's Dawn, meaning they can never get to 10 Dawn, uh, which is really, really interesting and really cool concept-wise. Um, but it's only during your turn, so if it was until the end of the next turn, like, for example, the new uh, Bonnie that we're getting in OPO7, then I actually think this leader might have be playable because he stops 10 drops. But because he doesn't stop 10 drops, and because he only stops 3 costs, and his whole gimmick is that you basically rest him to do anything, he's not really looked at that fondly. Now, he did get a brand new card in the form of Fisher Tiger, which we were going to discuss, because I think that card's actually insane for this leader. But let's talk about some honorable mentions. These are all the cards I wanted to put in the deck, but ultimately didn't. Uh... Noah's Ark was originally in the deck list, but I ultimately cut it out. Uh, it's a really cool card. Basically, you get to on play, rest all your opponent's characters, and then it, its trigger effect is literally play this card. Uh, it's one of the biggest field spells we ever had. Uh, if it wasn't such high cost, I think this card would be actually a staple in green decks. But a simple fact that it's such a high cost being 6 Dawn in order to use this. Also, you're green, so you don't have the ability to manipulate your life like all the other leaders do. In yellow, for example. That there's no way to put this into your life to guarantee its trigger effect. Thus, it's ultimately just a very, very luck sacky card that has no counter. So overall, we cut it for better cards. Uh, next card I want to talk about is the next worst card on his list, which is Koala. This card came out in OPO7, and as much as I love this character from the flashbacks, and also just in the main story, because she's all grown up now as a Revolutionary Army character, uh, ultimately, I think Kid Koala sucks ass as a card. Uh, basically, she has the effect where on your opponent's turn, you can rest this character, and then give one of your three costs or lower characters... Oh, my bad. Five costs or lower characters blocker this turn, which is really really cool until you realize you waste three dawn to play a zero attack monster that gives another character blocker, meaning both characters will die and you really just gain one block out of this. Uh, ultimately, I think this card just ass. If it was a 2k counter, I'd say maybe, but it's not a fishman. It's ultimately just a lore card, which is cool and all, but ultimately it's not good enough. And ultimately just really, really bad. Next, for our final three cards, uh, we have a new Jinbei. This is literally just a vanilla, 4 cost, 6k. Uh, we are not uh, blue-green Sanji, thus we have no reason to play vanillas in our deck. So ultimately, it's just not good enough, even though he is a Fishman Pirate slash Sun Pirates card, which would have been really, really cool. I think for some reason they've been hoeing Jinbei as a green card, which is really, really strange because he is integral to the Fishman Pirates, and he is a Fishman Pirate himself. He is literally a founding member of that, 
So I wish they actually gave Jimbei like an actual good effect. Like even the promo version is nothing to write home about besides being a 2K. So honestly, Jimbei, we need to get a better version that's very accessible to us. Uh, finally, we have Dracula Mihawk. Uh, this card is the, probably the most playable out of the bunch. He's a 2k 3 cost that allows you to play a slash character from your uh, hand onto the field rested. Uh, I really wanted to put him in the deck because this deck is lacking 2ks. But ultimately, it's not searchable. And it does play a, basically 4 cost uh, 6k for free for on your 3 dawn turn. But there's so much removal in the game and you really don't have a way to protect it. I honestly think that Draco Mihawk is just an overrated card. I know a lot of Hody Jones players have been playing Draco Mihawk, but honestly, I think with the new card in the form of uh, basically the brand new Fisher Tiger, there's just no room for Draco Mihawk. If he was a Fisherman, absolutely, but he isn't, so ultimately we cut him. Uh, the final new card I wanted to discuss was Aladdin. I think he's actually really, really solid. He's a blocker, 5 cost, 6k, which is great stats. Uh, on KO, he floats into a Merfolk or Fishman card that has three or less costs. This is actually really, really solid and probably a great effect. My only issue is because this leader in particular is already playing two 5k cost characters that we'd rather play over him in the form of Fisher Tiger and the original uh, new Fishman Pirates card. Uh, I forgot his name. I'll show you in the video. But ultimately, I just feel like there was not enough room to play literally 15 five-cost characters. Uh, maybe there is an argument we should be playing Aladdin. He does float into a three or less, not to mention he is as a blocker, which this deck does not have any of at the moment. So there's a huge argument of playing Aladdin. I really think we maybe should, but I don't know what to cut in order to put him in. So for now, he's just a maybe option. Maybe with some more testing, I'll put him in. But for now, he's just a maybe. Uh, if he had counter, he would be an absolute. But because he has no counter, he's an iffy card. Uh, let's actually talk about the actual deck itself. So I already went over the leader. Uh, let's talk about the actual cards we're playing. We're playing four 10 cost Don Quixote Del Flamingo. Uh, this card is a staple in every green deck. From Bonnie all the way to uh, Perona. Uh, every green deck will be playing Don Quixote Del Flamingo. Because he literally on play freezes three characters or leaders. Which is absolutely insane and just really, really great uh, tempo swings. Uh, next, we're playing three, uh, four Hody Jones. He's like the actual in archetype boss monster. Uh, he is searchable with our lovely, lovely Kami. Uh, he has Rush. He rests two characters. Now, he does have the downside that you lose a life when you do play him and do his effect. But luckily, because of our Hody Jones, basically the idea is that we're going to use Hody Jones' effect, rest our leader, and even rest a Dawn they have or rest at three costs, then play Hody Jones, not lose a life off the Hody Jones, and Hody Jones will then rest two characters and then swing with Rush. That's the idea, and ultimately it is still a pretty good idea. I just wish it, I wish it just rested better characters, ultimately. Uh, that is it for our big guys. Let's talk about our smaller dudes. Uh, next, we're playing two Krieg. Uh, he's the only other non Don Quixote pirate card we're playing. Now, I probably made it very controversial why we're playing Krieg over Aladdin, but let me explain. Uh, Krieg is a 6 cost 7k, which is just a little harder to get rid of for both Black and, of course, uh, Red Purple Law. Uh, Red Purple Law can easily get rid of a 6 cost character. Uh, well, not a 6 cost character, my apologies. A 6,000 power character, because basically their 1 cost good dude removes, I, I believe, 3,000 power, and then Red Purple Law's whole gimmick is that he minus his 3 Dawn to remove a 3,000 or less character. So literally with just one removal spell, they basically get rid of Aladdin for free, which really, really sucks because Aladdin won't float because he has to be KO'd. Technically, Law is just bottom decking him, so you actually don't get the float effect. Unlike Creek here, who is a 7k, meaning they have to dedicate more removal in order to get rid of them. Not to mention, Don Creek has a purpose on play. Uh, basically, on play, you get a trash run card from your hand, and then KO two, four or less characters. Against Red Purple Law, this is devastating. Not to mention, this guy, you put a Dawn on him, becomes an 8k with double attack, 
which is just really, really good. And I think as long as Red Purple Law is in the format, I think Don Kring is just a sleeper green card that's actually really, really solid. I think this card's also really good in Perona, but for some reason, people don't play him, which is kind of crazy. He came out in OPO3. I think he needs more love. And yeah, there you go. Uh, next, we're playing for uh, Icarus Munch. This is the card I couldn't remember its name earlier. This is the five cost that literally on play, uh, you trash, uh, you gain, you lose a life. You put the life to your hand, just like how Cody does. But then also you get to play a four or less Fishman directly from your hand. He has a really cool cascading effect. You really want to see him. So the idea is that you want to do a leader ability so you don't lose life. Play an Icarus Munch, then play a four or less Fishman directly from your hand, which is really, really solid. Uh, next, we're playing four Fisher Tiger. Now, this is the brand new card that we got in OPO7. This is the only new card that we are playing. And this card is a beast. This card is absolutely incredible. And I'm actually really happy that he's leader lock because if he wasn't, he would be played in every other green deck. And he would be very, very strong. So basically what he does is that he's a 5 cost, 6k, 1,000 counter. On play, Fish. Uh, if your leader is a Fishman or Merfolk, Rest up to one of your opponent's six less, uh, six costs or less characters, and this character can attack characters the turn he is played. So he has pseudo rush. So we basically have two rushers in the deck now in the form of Hody Jones and Fisher Tiger, and they didn't give Fisher Tiger that shitty gimmick of losing a life. So you have to do leader effect. You don't gotta do that. He doesn't have that effect on him because he is not taking the stupid steroids that kill you. Uh, the reason why all these other characters that are new Fishman Pirates make you lose a life is because in the lore, in the manga, in the anime, their whole gimmick is that they're taking a steroid that gives them really, really strong strength, but it's actually aging them and killing them. That's why they all have gray hair, uh, because they're actually getting overaged because they're getting steroided up, and then literally at the end of the arc, they're old people. Like, literally, they literally kill themselves. It's, it's really sad. So they gave up their youth. For a short time of strength, which is pretty stupid. But he, overall, Fisher Tiger is just a great card. He doesn't need no steroids. He doesn't need to take your life, which is just really, really fantastic. And he literally is just a fantastic card. Next, we're playing four Arlong. Now, this card also does not make you lose a life because he does not take the steroid either. Uh, basically, you get a trash one card from your hand. And then up to one of your opponent's rested leaders cannot attack until the end of the turn. I and mean, then his trigger is basically rest of four or less, which is really, really insane. Uh, basically, the idea of him is that if you go get the deck like Katakuri, or you go get the deck like Gecko Moria, or Blue Dolphy, that all need to swing in order to do their effects, Kat Arlong says, no, 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 you gotta wait a turn, which is really devastating to those decks. Any deck that needs to swing in order to do their effects, this basically says, nah, you gotta wait. This is also devastating against decks like Black Yellow Luffy because Black Yellow Luffy's whole gimmick is that not only did they pump themselves really, really big in order for you not to swing at them in the following turn because it'll be a 9k leader, but also so they can swing 9k at your face. Arlong basically says, yeah, no, 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 your Luffy might be 9k, but he ain't swinging at me, which is pretty insane. Uh, next, you're playing one Hody Jones and Hirazura, and then three Hirazuru. Uh, basically, they're all the same card. This is just a promo version of him. So, basically, if you own four Horazuras, and you, you can technically play eight of this guy, because this is technically a different card, uh, which is kind of interesting. It's kind of like the whole, uh, what's it called, Pacifista gimmick, but instead it's a promo, uh, because it, it is him, it's just with Hody Jones also in the artwork, making him a technically a separate card. So you can play four of this guy and four of this guy if you wanted to, which I probably would, but they don't have counter. So I think you only need four. But because I own the promo, I might as well use it. So that's why we have the promo version here. And basically his whole gimmick is that he's a four cost, 6k, that once per turn during main phase, you get a rest an opponent's four cost. This character gains a thousand power, so he's a four cost, 6k, uh, 7k. But you didn't lose a life, but if you use Hody Jones effect, you don't lose a life. So basically, he's just resting a unit, which is really, really solid. And overall, just fantastic for the deck. Uh, next, talking about octopuses, we have Honchon. Honchon is literally just a 2k. I wish we had better 2ks in his deck. 
but honestly, we just don't. Uh, the only reason why we're playing Hotshot is literally because he's a fishman, so he is searchable. And he's just a really cool 2k. That's really it. He's technically a slash character, so if you want to play the Mihawk, uh, you have him, 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 and him as your slash targets. I don't know why you want to do that, because this guy just sucks on field. But overall, he's just a 2k that's searchable. We're not East Blue, so we don't get a trigger effect. And honestly, I wish, wish we had better 2Ks. I know the Jinbei promo is a 2K, but again, good luck finding that Jinbei promo for a decent price. So honestly, I'm just going to stick with the hot chance. Not to mention, I got the winner version like two weeks ago because I got first place in OPO6 with Blue Dolphy. So let's go. Uh, next, we're playing for Dozen. Dozen just really, really solid. Uh, he's a 3 cost 6K because basically if your leader's new Fishman Pirates... Uh, he can't be KO'd by battle. Also, he gains an additional 2,000 to the start of next turn. So the idea is that he's just a free 3 cost that becomes a 6k, which actually does matter because your opponent might think he's a 4, but he's actually a 6. Uh, if he made himself a 7, it will be even better because then Red Purple Law will have to negate 2 removal for him. But because he only pumps him up to 6, uh, Red Purple Law can easily just use the, little, the 1 cost dude and get rid of him. But overall, he's still really, really solid, and overall, it's just a great card in general. Uh, next, we're playing four of our Dumra. Uh, this guy basically attacks twice, but you lose a life unless you use your leader effect. Uh, basically, one Dawn attached to him. This, uh, if your leader's new Fisherman Pirates, this guy gains a thousand power, so he becomes a 5k, plus a Dawn, so he becomes a 6k, and then he attacks twice, which is really, really cool because he restands himself, which is really, really cool. My only issue is that, again, Red Purple Law and Black Decks can easily remove them because they're literally three costs, so they're really easy to kill. Uh, speaking of really bad 2Ks, we have four Zeno. Uh, this card is just a 2K. His effect is basically just a worse version of Dozen. Uh, one Dawn attached to him when attacking. He gains a 1,000 power, but then you lose a life. So basically, he's a 2 cost, 4, uh, well, he'll become a 5K. Uh, two cost 5k, but you lose a life, but of course you use leader ability. Uh, to me, these guys are just slow, but you need to play them because he's a 2k that's searchable in the deck. And overall, just pretty decent. I actually think, honestly, the cards that need revamping is everything below. I think all these cards need some revamp. I mean, all these cards are actually really insane. So maybe if we just get some better Fishman Pirates, we'll get some better cards. Uh, speaking of actually good Fishman Pirate cards, Vander Deccan's insane. It's a two cost that literally on play, trash one Fishman Pirate from your hand. KO any character that's rested. That means this card can kill 10 drop Dolphy. This card can kill 10 drop Rush Ace. This card can kill 10 drop Monkey D. Luffy. 10 drop Big Mom. And this card can kill anything. As long as you trash a card from hand. Um, overall, it's a really, really great card and just fantastic. And I think it's just a must of four of if you're playing this leader. And then finally, we're playing four Kami because this card is a search for the deck. Literally look at the top four, add any Merfolk or Fishman card from your deck to hand. Basically, I mean, this card searches anything in the deck besides uh, these two Don Kriegs and the four Don Quixote Dolphin Mingos. So that is it for the deck profile. I really hope you all enjoy. If you can find space for Aladdin or the Dracul Mihawk, all the better. But ultimately, I think this is the best list going into OPO7. I wish you all the best of luck. And yeah, that's really all I got. Hope you all enjoyed. Don't think it's stupid. See you all next one. And bye bye. <laughs>